Good morning everyone. Today, I will be your presenter. My name is Mark Anthony Mahada from BSN Science 2A. I will be presenting to you my report about the physical development of intermediate schoolers. Now, intermediate schoolers are also known as the late childhood. Overview. Late childhood is generally defined as ages 9 through 12. Others may call this stage as preteens. Physical changes during this stage are fairly unpredictable among children in this age group. The steady and gradual changes happening in children at this age, especially with their increasing familiarity with their schoolwork and other possible activities, provide them with a greater opportunity to develop their model skill functioning. Intermediate schoolers have more control over their bodies than they have when they were in primary school. They become more active and have greater liberty to choose the hobbies or sports that they want to get involved in. Children in their late childhood stage always seem to be in a hurry. They get so busy with their schoolwork, interacting with their friends, exploring other possible activities. But this period of physical development seems to take a leisurely time. This may also be the stage when puberty may begin. So I, hope, I know that everyone knows what is puberty, but again, puberty is the period in which the body undergoes physical changes and becomes capable of sexual reproduction. Early puberty On the average, girls are generally as much as two years ahead of boys in terms of physical maturity. Puberty begins early, budding breasts for girls, which is the initial sign of puberty for girls. Some girls may also start menstrual period as early as 8 and some as late as 13. Other structures like the brain, intestine, and other organs and bodily systems mature at their own time, thus affecting growth patterns. Children gain an average of 7 pounds in weight and average of 2.5 inch in head circumference each year. Children at this stage have growth spurts or the sudden boost in height and weight, which are usually accompanied by increase in appetite and food intake. This stage is also characterized by advanced development of their fine and gross motor skills. Muscle strength and stamina increase as they are offered different physical activities. Motor skills is a function. Motor skill is a function that involves specific movement of the body's muscle to perform a certain task. These tasks could include walking, running, or even riding a bike. Now, there are two types of motor skills. These are the gross motor skills and the fine motor skills, wherein the gross motor skills require the use of the large muscle groups in our legs, torso, and arms to perform tasks such as walking, balancing, and crawling. On the other hand, the fine motor skills require the use of smaller groups of muscle to perform small movements. These muscles include those found in our wrists, hands, and in our toes. These tasks are precise in nature, like playing the piano, tying shoelaces, which we use our fingers, brushing your teeth, and flossing, which we use our hands. Puberty's changes start when the brain triggers the production of sex hormones. Here are some changes that may happen to both girls and boys during early puberty. For girls, small lumps from behind the nipple may occur, which sometimes could be painful but eventually the pain goes away. It is normal for one breast to develop more slowly than the other. For boys, they may also have swelling on their chest but tends to go away within a year or two. Now let's talk about the genitals. For girls, the vulva starts in increase a bit. The vagina gets expand and the uterus gets bigger. Now for boys, some tall increase in testicle size, penis and scrotum starts to grow, and the semen may be released when he is awake or even during sleep. For hair growth, girls' hair will start to grow in the armpits and pubic areas. For boys, hair will start to grow and become thicker. New hair will also grow in the armpits and pubic area around the genitals. They may also start developing chest and facial hair. Now let's talk about a height, weight, and muscle development. During this stage, 
movements of the muscles and bones become more coordinated. At the age of 10 or 11 years, most children will have learned to play sports like swimming, basketball, volleyball, and running. These physical skills become a source of pleasure and great achievement to the children. In activities that use large muscle activities, boys tend to be more nimble than girls. Although a significant increase in physical activity may occur in this stage, children in their late childhood is far from being physically mature. They become overwhelmed when sitting or standing too long than when running, jumping, or playing actively. This is because they need time to refine their skills so they prefer active rather than passive movements. From the age of 8, children show greater coordination in writing. Their fine motor skills develop gradually which may be evidenced by the size of the letters and numbers. Font size becomes smaller and is more even. They may even produce good quality crafts or have greater control in instruments like the piano or guitar. These skills, girls usually surpass the boys. Just like us, children have also insecurities. Children at this age may become too concerned with their physical appearance. Girls especially may become concerned about their weight and decide to eat less. Boys may become aware of their stature and muscle size and strength, so you must be very conscious about their dealings with these children. Appropriate activities must be designed so that children will be guided into the right direction. Children must be given opportunities to engage. Since this stage can bring about insecurities, parents and teachers themselves must engage in worthwhile activities that, number one, promote healthy growth, second, give them a feeling of accomplishment, and lastly, reduce the risk of a certain diseases. Now let's talk about the implications to childcare, education, and parenting. During this stage, children are more physically active, however, still have a lot of physical maturity to undergo. Here are some points to consider for healthcare providers, teachers, and parents. Number one, provide ample opportunities at home and in school for physical exercise and sports. Two, encourage children to participate in varied worthwhile activities until they are able to discover the ones they are interested in. Third, Develop a strong emotional attachment with your children so as to address any insecurities and social concerns. And lastly, since children in this stage have more control over their eating habits, provide them with healthier food choices. My presentation ends here. I hope that you learned and understand something from this. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day ahead.